All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here is the list of topics to be covered in this video. Problem 1. A 38-foot ladder leans against a building so that the angle between the ground and the ladder is 78 degrees. How high does the ladder reach up the building? So we're going to draw a diagram. It'll make this problem a lot easier to follow. So we have the ground. There it is. We have a building. All right. And generally, we're assuming buildings are perpendicular to the ground, so we've got a right angle. There's a ladder that leans up against the building. Note how impressive my drawing skills are. The ladder is 38 feet long, and we also know the angle to the ground is 78 degrees, and now we have a right triangle. So identify what we're trying to solve for. How high does the ladder reach up the building? That's this height right here. Now we need to identify what trigonometric function incorporates our given information and what we're trying to solve for. And here it's the sine. The sine of 78 degrees will be h over 38. In other words, h is 38 times the sine of 78 degrees, which is approximately 37.2 feet. In problem two, the angle of elevation to the top of a building in New York is found to be 5 degrees from the ground, one mile from the base of the building. Using this information, find the height of the building and round to tenths. Hint, one mile is 5,280 feet, which I guess means we're going to be converting everything to feet, although that wasn't specifically asked for. But okay, let's draw our ground. Let's draw a building. All right. We've got our observer, who we consider to be a point on the ground. There's an angle of elevation to the top of the building of 5 degrees. There's a distance to the building, one mile, 5,280 feet. What are we trying to solve for? The height of the building. Now what trigonometric function is relevant? Here it's the tangent of 5 degrees is h over 5,280, so the height of the building is 5,280 times the tangent of 5 degrees, which is about 491.9 feet. In problem 3, a radio tower is located 425 feet from a building. From a window somewhere on the building, a person determines that the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is 32 degrees and the angle of depression to the bottom of the tower is 29 degrees. We now need to know how tall the tower is. So we have our ground, we have a building, we have a radio tower. We have the distance between the two, which is 425 feet. Somewhere on the building, we don't know exactly where, there's a window. We do, however, know there are certain angles, and these angles reference a given horizontal. There's a 32 degree angle of elevation to the top of the tower and a 29 angle of depression to the bottom, both of which reference a straight horizontal line, and the distance between the two towers is 425 feet. Now what are we after? The total height of the tower, but we can break that up into two pieces. The total height, h, is little h1 plus h2, where those are the heights of these triangles that we've now formed. We can identify trigonometric functions that we can use to solve for h1 and h2. The tangent of 32 degrees is h1 over 425, and the tangent of 29 degrees is h2 over 425. We can solve these for h1 and h2 and add them together. So h is the sum of h1 plus h2. We can factor out a 425. 425 times tangent of 32 degrees plus tangent of 29 degrees. There's your exact answer, but if you want to round it off, it's about 501.2 feet. Problem 4. A survey team is trying to estimate the height of a mountain above a level plain, and from one point on the plain they observe an angle of elevation to the top of the mountain of 26 degrees. From 1,500 feet closer to the mountain, they find the angle of elevation is now 28 degrees. How high is the mountain? So the picture is going to be slightly more work than the previous examples. We start by drawing a flat plane and we put a mountain on it. Now the height of a mountain is measured perpendicularly to ground level. So if we had an imaginary vertical line going down to the level of the plane, making a right angle, there's our mystery height, h. Now let's place our observer. There's just a point mass somewhere on the plane. Mark off the angle of elevation of 26 degrees. Now we move closer to the mountain. How far did we move? We moved 1,500 feet, and now we have another angle of elevation, 28 degrees. Now the mountain's sides are not really necessary, so let's remove what is not necessary any longer, the mountain and the observer. So here's the diagram we have. We have a 26 degree angle, a 28 degree angle, 1500 feet between them, and H over on the right forming a right angle to ground. So now we have this new simplified picture. We can start to work towards solving for H. We actually have two right triangles here. One of them has a 26 degree angle and one has a 28 degree angle. There's the overall right triangle and then the smaller one with the 28 degree angle on the left. We also have one, probably, non-right triangle on the left with the 26 degree angle and the way it's drawn, it looks like it's an obtuse triangle. 
Now, if we had either of the two sides of the 28 degree right triangle other than the h, if we had any of those two values known, we could set up a trigonometric function of 28 degrees and solve for h. But the hypotenuse of this right triangle with 28 degrees is one of the sides of the non-right triangle with that 1500 foot side on it. So since we know that 1500 foot side, we can actually complete the non-right triangle, then use the side length that is shared with the 28 degree right triangle to solve for h. So we're trying to now solve the non-right triangle on the left, but it looks like we have one side length, 1500, and one angle, and that's not enough information, but we actually know another angle. If we mark this angle here as theta, it's supplementary to 28 degrees, it's 152 degrees. Now we have two angles, and since the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we can solve for the third, it's two degrees. Now the side we're interested in solving for, the one that is shared between the non-right triangle and the smaller right triangle on the right, we're gonna label as x. We can use the law of sines on the non-right triangle on the left to solve for this. The sine of 26 degrees divided by x will be equal to the sine of two degrees divided by 1500. In other words, x is 1500 times the sine of 26 degrees divided by the sine of two degrees. We're not going to estimate this yet. So there's our length. Now let's turn our attention to that right triangle on the right that has the 28 degree angle in it and get rid of all the information that's no longer necessary. The sine of 28 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse h over x. So h is x times the sine of 28 degrees, but x is something we've already solved for. It was 1500 times the sine of 26 degrees over the sine of two degrees. So here's the value of h, the height of our mountain. If you really want to plug and chug your way to an approximation, it's about 8,846 feet. Problem five, points A and B are separated by a lake. Observe, it's blue, it must be a lake. To find the distance between them, a surveyor locates a point C on land so that angle CBA is 42.1 degrees. The distance from A to C is measured to be 461 meters. The distance from B to C is measured to be 309 meters. Find the distance across the lake from A to B, and the diagram was given as part of the problem. But observe, we're given two sides and an angle that is not in between them. That's SSA, it is not a triangle congruence. So the first thing we need to do, using the law of sines, is determine if there might be no solution at all, or maybe two different possible solutions, in which case the problem is not very well formed. We're hoping that we're going to find that there is in fact one unique solution. So denote the length we're interested in as lowercase c. This is consistent with our normal conventions for how we label triangles. Then the law of sines specifies that the sine of angle A divided by 309 is equal to the sine of 42.1 degrees divided by 461. So the sine of A is 309 times the sine of 42.1 degrees over 461. This doesn't tell us the angle A, it merely tells us what the sine of A must be. Now, there are two possibilities here. Perhaps we have a quadrant one angle, in which case the arc sine function will work just fine. And since we have a whole bunch of decimal values for angles, I'm assuming approximations aren't gonna be that big of a deal. So the arc sine of this quantity is about 26.7 degrees. So if A is a quadrant one angle, it's 26.7 degrees. But what if there's a quadrant two angle? I mean, there is a quadrant two angle that takes the same value for its sine. 180 degrees minus this, or 153.3 degrees, is another angle, it's in quadrant two, and its sine is the same as the sine of 26.7 degrees. However, if that were our angle A, if I was to combine it with our known angle of 42.1 degrees, we would already have more than 180 degrees. So the quadrant two possibility can't actually be part of a triangle. So only the quadrant one possibility makes any sense, which is good news. There's only one solution. We're actually going to be able to find this distance. So let's go ahead and mark 26.7 degrees for angle A, and we'll move on from there. We now have enough information to complete this triangle. The easiest thing to do is to find the missing angle. Angle C, well, all three angles of a triangle add up to 180, so that allows us to solve for C as 111.2 degrees, roughly. Remember, there was some approximation in finding angle A already. Now we can use the law of sines to find side length C. 
Now, of all the angles we could use in addition to the 111.2 degrees, we're not going to use 26.7 because that was itself another approximation. I don't want to be compounding rounding errors if I can avoid it. The 42.1 degree was given information. We're taking it to be exact. So the sine of 42.1 degrees divided by 461 will be equal to the sine of 111.2 degrees divided by our unknown length c. We can solve this for c and it's approximately 641 meters. In problem six, a communication tower is located at the top of a steep hill as shown. Thankfully, a diagram was given. The angle of inclination of the hill is 74 degrees. A guy wire is to be attached to the top of the tower and down to the ground 175 feet downhill from the base of the tower. The angle formed by the wire is 11 degrees. Find the length of the cable required for this guy wire. So first, let's label X as our unknown length. This is what we are trying to solve for. Now it's part of a triangle in which all we know is a single angle, 11 degrees, and a single length, 175 feet. We need more information in order to solve for that triangle. But there's only one other piece of information we were even given, this 74 degree angle. How can that be useful to us? Now that's the angle of the hill slope to a horizontal line, no matter where the horizontal line is drawn. So what if it's up here? Now we can solve for the complementary angle of 16 degrees, and then inside our triangle is a supplementary angle to that, or 164 degrees. So now we have a triangle with two angles and one length in between them. We can isolate this triangle with that information and then proceed. So here's the triangle with our unknown x, two known angles, 11 degrees and 164 degrees, and one known side length, 175 feet. The missing angle is very straightforward. The three angles have to add up to 180, so we solve for this angle, it's five degrees. Now the law of sines can be used. In general, if you have lots of angles, use the law of sines. If you have lots of side lengths, use the law of cosines. We have lots of angles and at least one side, so let's use the law of sines to solve for x. The sine of 164 degrees over x must be equal to the sine of 5 degrees over 175. This allows us to solve for x, which is approximately 553.5 feet. Next up in problem 7, a pilot is flying over a straight highway. He determines the angles of depression to two mileposts, A and B, to be 6.1 kilometers apart, calling into question why we would call them mileposts. However, the angles of depression are 36 and 45 degrees, respectively, as shown in the provided figure. Find the distance of the plane to milepost A, but also find the elevation of the plane. Now, elevations, heights, are always measured perpendicular to ground, so we're going to go ahead and throw that down as a vertical line. Now, based off properties of parallel lines, the horizontal line of the highway and the horizontal line of sight from the plane, we can find some angles down at the ground. Based on opposite interior angles of parallel lines, we have an angle down here of 36 and an angle over there of 45 degrees. Now observe that the triangle on the right is isosceles. It has two 45 degree angles and one 90 degree angle. So we can extract some information about lengths as well. Since the height of that triangle is h, so is the other leg. The total distance was 6.1 kilometers, so the leg of that other triangle is 6.1 minus h. Now we could, in theory, on the right triangle to the right, use a tangent function to say that the tangent of 45 degrees is h over h, which is 1, which is true, which is marvelous. However, we canceled out the h we were trying to solve for. So instead, let's look at the right triangle on the left. So now here is the right triangle from the left, presented by itself. Now we can see that the tangent of 36 degrees is h divided by 6.1 minus h. We multiply that denominator to the other side, distribute, move all terms with h to one side so we can factor out an h and then solve for h as 6.1 times the tangent of 36 degrees divided by 1 plus the tangent of 36 degrees. If you'd like, you can approximate this to about 2.57 kilometers. Okay, so we were also asked to find the distance of the plane to point A, but that's pretty straightforward. The other leg of this triangle was of length 6.1 minus h. We've solved for h to be about 2.57. That makes this length about 3.53. Now we can just use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance from point A to the plane, and it works out to be about 4.37 kilometers. And in problem eight, we're going to find the distance across a small lake. A surveyor has marked the given measurements. Thankfully, this diagram was provided. 
find the distance across the lake using this information. Now there's two sides given, but also the angle between them. That's a triangle congruence, which means we can completely solve this triangle, find all sides and all angles, but all we actually care about is the unknown distance x across the lake. With several sides and relatively few angles known, we're going to be using the law of cosines. So we simply set this up as 2.43 squared plus 3.43 squared minus 2 times 2.43 times 3.43 times the cosine of 48.3 degrees, that being the angle between them, must equal x squared, the length opposite that angle. We just solve for x by taking a square root. We ignore the negative solution because we're finding an actual distance, and this is really just a plug and chug at this point. It's about 2.57 miles. Now in problem 9, we have a steep mountain, there is an incline of 74 degrees to the horizontal, and it rises to a height of 3400 feet above the surrounding plain, we'll presume that's flat. A cable car is to be installed running to the top of the mountain, from a point 900 feet away from the base of the mountain on the plain, find the length of cable needed. Now we need to make our own diagram here, so first we can draw a flat plain, we can put down a mountain with an angle of 74 degrees to horizontal. It has a height of 3400 feet, which is always measured perpendicular to horizontal. Horizontal. We have a cable car base 900 feet away, and here's the length we need to solve for. I've called it x. Now there are two angles we can immediately determine. First, supplementary to 74 degrees, there's 106 degrees here, but also complementary to 74 degrees is 16 degrees over there. We may not need both of these angles, but they are pretty direct to find, so I've gone ahead and put them in. Now we can also determine the horizontal distance under the mountain y. Notice that the tangent of 16 degrees in that triangle is y divided by 3400. In other words, y is 3400 times the tangent of 16 degrees. Now x happens to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The two legs are 3400, the perpendicular height of the mountain, and the sum of the two lengths, 900 plus 3400 times the tangent of 16 degrees, that makes the other leg of the right triangle with hypotenuse x. So we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem. x is equal to the square root of 3400 squared plus the quantity 900 plus 3400 times the tangent of 16 degrees squared. That approximates to about 3883 feet. Finally, in problem 10, a pilot flies in a straight path for 1 hour and 30 minutes. She then makes a course correction heading 10 degrees to the right of the original course and flies 2 hours in the new direction. If she maintains a constant speed of 700 miles per hour, how far is she from her starting position? So let's fly in a given direction for 1.5 hours. Then we turn 10 degrees to the right from the direction we were headed. Now we fly for two hours in this direction and we've reached our ending location. The distance from the start to the finish is our unknown value, x. However, we've got these things marked off in hours and that's not really how we measure distance, but we do have a speed of 700 miles per hour. So 700 miles per hour times 1.5 hours gives us 1,050 miles for that segment there, and for the other segment we get 1,400 miles. Now we can find a supplementary angle to that 10 degrees, it's 170 degrees. Observe, we have a triangle with two sides, 1050 and 1400, and the angle between them, 170 degrees. So the law of cosines will allow us to solve for x, the side across from 170 degrees, immediately. Specifically, one length squared plus the other length squared minus twice the product of the two lengths and the cosine of the angle between them will be the opposite length squared. So we take a square root, and this is approximately 2,441 miles.